This video is about how to lay out a book in Affinity Publisher. Not how to create a whole book, just how to set it up and lay it out in the first place. You can use Affinity Publisher to create a professional looking ebook or a book for print publication. But first, determine if you want an ebook or a print book. It's not a good idea to try and do both at the same time. And what we'll do here is I'll first set up a print book and then I'll set up a document for an ebook. And ebooks you could use as a in a PDF, for example. Now you want the pages set up for the entire book, so you then create the layout for the master pages, which act as templates for all the pages of the book. So the layout for each type of page is consistent. You can then focus on the layout of each page and add the content. So, creating a document. We begin by setting out a print book. Launch Affinity Publisher, which I've done. Click the File menu and click New. And the New Document window will appear. Okay, now to select Print, for a print book, I just had a screen grab come up there. Select print for a print book or web for a, for an ebook. Now we don't want an ebook; we want print for a print book. And some of the other options change. A print book should have facing pages, and that's that there. Should have facing pages selected, and an ebook should not. This also determines whether the master page has two pages side by side or one single page. So facing pages, obviously you've got a page side by side. And we're going to be in portrait mode. A book is normally portrait mode unless you're doing something quite different. Check the default master option if you plan to use page numbers, footers or headers on each page. And again, ebooks don't require this. And there's your default master option, just below number of pages one. You can use the height and width fields to set the page size or select a page preset for the size you require. The default is A4, so you can see it comes up as A4 there. Specify your margins for each page in the margin sections if you need to. Ebooks don't normally need this option. And there's your different page sizes, and whichever one of those you select, your margins and page sizes will react accordingly. Page width, page height, and I've got DPI dots per inch set here to 300. Color, RGB, margins, there's your standard margins. The inner margin, the outer margin, top and bottom. Now you can change the inner margin to something slightly larger to allow for the binding or the gutter size, but you'll have to work that out later. Don't select retrieve margins from printer. You'll run into all sorts of problems. There's no bleed on this. Now bleed's interesting when it comes to paper cutting and documents with graphics on that go right up to the edge. So you need bleed so that the graphics can go over to the bleed. Let's not get too technical. Leave it at layout. Enter a value for the number of pages if desired. You can add and remove pages later using the pages panel. Number of pages, one. We'll just have one to start with. Click OK to create the document. OK, there we are. Note that each page has a blue line showing the margins. You can enable or disable other options in the view tool bar. The page size is shown against the dark background. Now, view while we're on this section, and there's your show bleed, show margins, guides. You can put a grid on there, show baseline for, of text grid, preview mode. There's lots of things there that, that you can experiment with but I'll leave you to experiment with that at your leisure.
The left navigation pane shows the master A page associated with this document and below that page one, the first page of the document. So there's master A and there's page one. Now you'll note there's a space there to the left of page one because a document always starts page one on the right hand side of the facing page. If you open a book, chapter one should start on the right hand side. Page one, chapter one. You may have others, other pages there, but that's not page one. That's page one. And it's related to the master A. Now, if you double click on that, double click on master A, you can see that you've got a left page and a right page. Double click on the page one and it goes back to single page showing. That's the page showing. So how do we set up the master page? Double click on the master page icon in the pages panel. That's that there. We've got main page showing master. It will temporarily replace a single page in the main editing area. The master page appears in the main window and acts as a template for the pages of your book. Changes you make to the master affect all pages in the book using that master page. And you can apply different masters to different pages. To add page numbering, on the pages panel, that's there, select a master page from the window. We've done that, we've got master page selected. From the text menu, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We need to create a text, text frame, tongue-tied, to place your page number field and optionally extra headers and footers, etc. So this is the master. Let's go to there, which is a frame text tool. And we'll put... Down the bottom left hand side, 5 by 8 by, should I say 8 by 8? Okay, one there and over the other side. Now I want to move that slightly, so I go back and select the arrow and just move that in there. Now that's about the same place. You can be much more precise with this, and of course you should be. Or I can put the page right up to the edge of the margin. That one's on the edge of the margin, and so is that one there. Now, we've got that there. From the text menu, select in, Insert Fields and Page Number. From the text menu, Insert Fields page number. We do the same over here. Text insert fields page number. Now if you look closely at the bottom left hand side there you'll see it's a hash sign. Just in there that's a hash sign. I'll just bring the pointer back so we haven't got that. There's a hash sign. There's a hash sign. Now, it's not showing the pages because this is the master page, remember? Now, if we go and have a look at page one, double click on it, and there in the little box is page one. Now, um, you can format that, do what you like with it. Put it in position, put it centrally, put borders around it, but that's page one. Remember I said that side of the page is page one. So there's no page number showing there on the first page because if we put more pages down there, then you'll have page two and page three, and I'll do that in a moment. Add additional master pages as needed to create a different layout for first pages of chapters or pages without page numbers. Click the new master in the page panel menu.
you can put a new master page there. You repeat the process for the second master page if you're using facing pages. Remember to put the page number on the opposite side of a facing page because this in the middle is your binding. So you want to be able to read the page number out there or you can put it in the middle. I mean you can put it in there if you like but uh, it's going to be difficult to read. Okay, there's your page. Now, there are your margins, but what you don't have is somewhere to put the text. You can put your text boundaries in here, and then every page will have the appropriate text boundaries, or you can do it here, in that page. And that's where I'll do it for this exercise. Click the first page of the page panel to make it appear in the main window. Select the frame text tool and drag out a text frame to fill the page margins. There's the frame text tool. It should highlight momentarily. There we go, frame text tool. That's selected. It's dark on this dark background. I do wish Affinity would um, allow some... Uh, interface adjustments here. So there's the top left hand corner of inside the margins. We drag out a page, bound, a page text marker and we're sitting it on top of the page number. Now see that little arrow on the side there? That becomes important. There's your text up there. We've got a text box the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog highlight that go up to well we've got Arial let's let's give it some a decent it's a font we can see back issues and regular size and uh, let's fill that top space 18 point or oh, it's just a bit too much 16 point fits there okay now we're down on that section next line what you can do because what i want to show you here to make sure that things are going right you can insert filler text now this is this will be familiar to you as soon as you see it and there's your filler text. Goes right down to the bottom. And that's the idea. Duplicate selected pages, add pages. Number of pages two. Insert after the existing page, after page one, and the master page you're basing them on is master A. Okay? Click OK. And there's your two pages. Now, it doesn't have the text boundary there, not yet anyway. So there's no text appearing there. This is a, a good enough reason that you might want to put your text boundaries from there into the master so that each set of pages you create, you don't have to do this. Find the edge there. Drag it out, down the bottom. You'll notice it's got page 2 in there. We'll do the same over here. And there's page 3. So you've got page 1, page 2, page 3. There we go, page 2 and page 3. Now how do we get the text in here? into the next one as well. There's the arrow. And you can see I clicked on the arrow on the right hand side. This came up in highlight in blue mode. You can rewind the video a little bit and you can see the link from the previous page. So if you've got a document you want to pull into this, 
that's how you do it. So let's go down there where the little arrow, the little right facing arrow, click on that arrow, go over there, that changes to blue and just click enter. And the filler text carries on across to the next page. And you can see over here you've got page one, page two and three. And that's it. It's set up with one master page and three pages full of text. Now back to page one, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and a whole set of filler text. Now, what we want to do for the next bit is create an ebook. Now, this can be as simple as you like or as difficult as you like. The same with this. You can make this quite difficult. You can export this to a PDF file or a PNG file or nearly any of the um, nearly any of the export options that you have available in Publisher. I'll let you discover those because here we're talking about laying out a book. So let's create a new file. Creating a book that's going to be an ebook is somewhat different naturally. Most ebooks do not use a table of contents nor page numbers nor do they care about margins or page sizes. Most ebook readers need to be able to free flow the text and images to suit their own needs. Any that have specific needs usually have their own editors like Apple's pages. And in every case with an ebook, if you're producing your own ebook for sale on your website, for example, as a PDF file, you may find that you need to put in margins, but we'll look at that later. So we've got Affinity Publisher launched, click the file menu, click new, and we're still on print, but that's not what we want. So select web. It's web selected. Check the default master option if you plan to use any form of formatting or pre-formatted sections of each page. Ebooks don't normally require this. Make sure facing pages is unchecked. You've got default master there and that's checked. Where's facing pages? There's facing pages there. We do not want facing pages. Now the next bit is quite interesting. Select the page preset for the size you require. Now page presets are there and currently it's set to 1280 by 800. That's pixels and the aspect ratio is 16 to 10. Which is an odd ratio but it's almost a standard web page um, reader size. A lot of web pages, a lot of computer monitors you will find run in 1280 by 800. So if this is an ebook that's being read on a computer that might be okay. If you look carefully at those measurements and numbers you'll see they refer to actual screen sizes as used by most video or image resolution sizes. The numbers refer to screen size, the second set refers to aspect ratio. So let's have a look and see in here what is there. Now there's 1920 by 1080 which is 16 to 9 aspect ratio. That's very high resolution and landscape mode as used by most video recordings done in 1080 mode. For example, this one on YouTube is 1920 by 1080, which is an aspect ratio of 16 to 9. But you can't display landscape mode on portrait mode devices. Well, you can, but it will display very strangely. In order to read the page, you'll need to turn the device sideways. However, this is a good mode to set your frames in because it's easy to read. Set the DPI to 300 for high resolution. Most e-readers use high resolution. It's easy to scale down but not up. Okay, let's set that to that. That's 1080. Default size is pixels. Number of pages, one. 
Now you can see the DPI because every web page in the world, doesn't matter what size of your document is, they run at 72 dots per inch. But if, if you're creating a web page, and that's the original of this, it's a web page type document, then that's fine. But if you're going to be reading this on any sort of a device, such as an Apple iPad or any of the other many iPads, set it to 300, which immediately changes that up there to custom. So you can create your own custom preset if you want to, by just giving it a name and saving it. Actual size zoom, we'll leave that there, but you can see the whole range of things that are available there. And you can experiment with those. Number of pages one, default master is set. Click the OK to create the document. OK creates the document. Now there's our document. That will read on a device in landscape mode. Do we want that? Or do we want to leave it the other way around? And again, you've got the master page and page one. So let's try another one. File, new, for the web. <laughs> And the default setting of 16 by 10 do we want it in portrait mode let's have a look at this in portrait mode and you can see the page width becomes 900 and the height is 1460 this is just to show you what it looks like everything else remains the same and that's portrait mode And your master looks different. There's the first one I did in landscape mode. There's the next one I've done in portrait mode. Now we don't want any setup on, on, um, on this, but you can put in a boundary. Now I'll put the start point where the upper and left side of the cross is just on the boundaries. That's two points in from zero. I'll drag out a boundary. And why am I doing this? Because sometimes when you try and display this on a screen, the text will be right up to the edge of the page, and that makes it difficult to read. So this gives us a two millimeter boundary all around it. And you'll see again, we've got the ability to flow the text into the next, the next page. Now these aren't facing pages, text, we can insert filler text, again, there's our filler text, create a new page, add pages, we want to add one page, okay, there's our new page there, that's page two. Go to the little arrow, page two, go to there. We've got to put, oh, sorry, we've got to put our margins in there so we can fill it with text. Back there, click on that, click on that, turns to blue when we move in there. And there it goes. And you can see that's the link to the previous page. Add additional master pages as needed to create a different layout for first pages of chapters or pages without numbers. And you click the new master to do that. And you can drag, if you make changes to that or add another master, you just drag it on top of the page you want to change and it will change it because it doesn't necessarily apply to every page in the document. And that's all there is to it. Setting up 
an ebook in portrait mode, setting up an ebook in landscape mode in very high resolution, and setting up a print book with multiple pages, page numbers, and it allows you all sorts of other formatting. You can put a footer in there, you can put a header up there, do what you like. How to lay out a book in Publisher.